So for the sculpted layers technique, we're going to start by using a loaf mold, and I like to have a little paper drawing of my design. Uh, you can see I've made one here with my layers, and they're numbered in the order I'm going to scrape them. And I like to just tuck that down into the end of my mold and use that kind of as a guide when I'm pouring my layers. Uh, that way I make sure that things are filled to the right level and that I'm scraping the right side back. So you can see I just tuck it in at the end there, and you can leave it there. Uh, when your loaf is done, you'll peel it out at the end. For this project, I have a set of custom scrapers that were made for me by the wonderful Belinda at Love Your Suds. Uh, these are hard acrylic scrapers that she made for me just for this project. And you can see they assemble with bolts to set them to the right height, and they've got a little guide bar that rests on the mold as you scrape. Um, there's a full set. I like to have extra guide bars just so I don't have to change them out so often, but you can just move them from uh, scraper to scraper as you go. These scrapers are covered in a protective paper backing because they're new. I haven't used them yet, so you can see that just kind of peels off and will reveal the clear acrylic underneath. I'm actually not going to peel them all the way off all of my scrapers because when I was setting this design up, I went through and just marked on the paper where I wanted them to be. Um, but you'll see I'll peel these off the front and back, um, and you can see that they do have little guidelines already printed on them, which makes it really easy if you want to reuse these. Um, they actually have measurement guides along the sides so you can see where you would line up your crossbar. And you can see they're nice and hard, they don't have any flex to them, uh, they work really, really well. So here's a close-up of some scrapers. You can see the guide bars on both sides, uh, and that way you can set your little guide to the right height to make sure it's exactly where you want it to be for repeated designs. Now if you don't want to purchase these, um, you can make your own. This is a set that was made just from the plastic cutting boards. Uh, you can see they're pretty bendy, they were made to fit this nurture mold, so I've got this one here as an example. But they're just cut out of plastic and taped together with uh, <laughs> some unicorn duct tape. Uh, but you can see that those work really well as well. You can make them from something at home. You can also make them from cardboard, from paper. Uh, here's another one that was made from cardboard uh, and it's wrapped in just clear masking tape to make it waterproof. And it's got a, a popsicle stick taped to the back to help keep it stiff. Um, you can really make these from anything you want at home. They don't have to be expensive. Uh, you can cut up cardboard. People have made them from cereal boxes. Um, my personal favorite is cardboard. This is another variation on scrapers that Belinda also offers. These are her 3D printed ones. You can see they're a little bit more bendy than the acrylic ones, um, but these are also super nice. She has a ton of different options available on her website, and she also makes custom sets, so that could be an option for you in the future. These scraper tools are really the only thing that you're going to need for this challenge outside of your mold and a spatula. And so now we will move on to how to make the soap. For this technique, I prefer to work with master batched lye and oils. So I have all of the lye I'm going to use made up ahead of time and all of the volume of oils that I'm going to use up ahead of time. And then I pour off the amount for each layer. Um, I have included in the tutorial a little spreadsheet that goes through kind of a tip to help you figure out how to calculate what your layers need to be because uh, I don't cover that in this portion of the video. But I've sorted out ahead of time how much I need for each of my layers and so I'm just going to measure that out. So here I'm pouring off enough oil for my first layer and then you saw a second ago I poured off the amount of lye that I need. And then just going to mix those together just like you would normally. So I've got my oils, giving those a little blend. I'm going to add my color and mix that in. I've got my, my micas already prepped ahead of time, just to save time here. And I like to blend my oils with my mica ahead of time just to really get that incorporated. And then I can add my lye solution and give it a little zap with a stick blender. Uh, you will see here that I actually did overblend this layer a little bit too much. I used a fragrance that sets up a little bit, uh, which was one I haven't used before for this technique, uh, but I did want something that kind of helped set up trace, and I actually didn't account for quite how much this would set up. So you can see here I'm pouring this dark blue layer uh, with the little image on the right showing you what we're pouring. And it's hard to see from this angle, but my little drawing that I showed you in the beginning that was in the mold, I just want to make sure that my blue comes deep enough to cover all of the areas that are meant to be blue on that drawing. So I'm just tapping that in nice and smooth, and then I'm going to let it sit for just a few minutes to harden up. Um, and while that is hardening up, I'm going to measure off the amounts that I need for my next layer.
here I'm going to add in my orange mica. So this will be my second layer, which as you'll see uh, when we get there is gonna be the sun, uh, which will be carved out of this blue. So I've got my scraping tool, set those off to the side, and I'm gonna put it in and you can see how kind of this is a little bit too hard. So I'm starting with just a slightly shallower scrape and then deepening it as I go and just pulling back towards me. So this layer here you can see is this is too hard for this technique. Um, this has set up too much. And I actually considered kind of restarting this video, but I thought it would be a good example for you on what too firm looks like. Uh, you want this to be firm enough to hold its shape, but not so firm that it's kind of like Play-Doh, which is what this has done. Um, and this is just a byproduct of using a fragrance that maybe sets up a little too much and working a little too hot. And I'm just cleaning up the edges of my mold with the spatula here, uh, so I don't want any transfer into my layers and just smoothing things out a little bit. Then now that that is done, I'm gonna give this a super light dusting with mica. This is the only embellishment technique that's allowed in the challenge this month. Uh, if you wanted to do mica layers, I will say be careful with that because too much can cause separation. Uh, but I just wanted to give a super faint kind of golden halo around my sun. So here I've got my second layer. Again, stick blending a little bit less this time because I learned my lesson with the blue. And that's gonna be for the sun. So that will get poured into the space that I carved out for the first one. And you can see this is that kind of a medium trace. I've left it for about six or seven minutes, not a whole lot of time, but enough to set up. And now I'm just going through with my second scraper tool and you can see what I'm scraping away is that first pyramid shape. One kind of criticism of this technique is that it does use a lot of extra batter. I don't know if you can see off to the side of my video, I do have a whole separate mold over there that I did actually fill for this technique. It was a whole a whole second loaf of soap. Um, you can minimize this sort of based on how you design your landscape um, and also how you build your scrapers. Um, these pyramids are kind of deep cuts into the layers beneath them, so they do remove a lot of batter. Um, I personally end up using the scrape over as sample bars or as fragrance samples. Um, I do use them. They don't get thrown away. Um, it's all soap, even if it's all swirly and mixed together. Um, so for me, it's not really a waste, but I know some people don't prefer to have that much leftover batter. Uh, so that is something you can take into consideration kind of when you're planning your design. I also personally like to make my sculpted layer designs upside down in the mold, but another way that you can reduce waste is making them right side up, although you will find that that limits you as you can't kind of overlap your layers that way if you're making it right side up like you can uh, when you're making them upside down like this. When they're upside down, you can really cut into the layer that you've already poured versus when it's right side up, that's uh, much more challenging to do. Here I'm just adjusting the guide bar on my scraping tool. I'm actually going to use this same tool for the next layer, but I'm setting it a little bit shallower so it will scrape uh, the next layer just a little bit higher up. And when I scrape, you'll see I'm going to flip it because I want the peak of that pyramid shifted a little bit to the opposite side. Here I have my third layer measured out already. I did that while I was waiting for my setup. I'm mixing in my micas and then same thing, I'm going to add my lye and pour that layer, let it harden and then keep scraping. Now that my third layer is poured and set up, I'm going to scrape it. And you can see on the illustration here how it's the same scraper just flipped. So now I'm scraping the yellow on the right hand side and that illustration on the right. I made a little mess here to scoop that into the mold. And just slow and steady want to pull back towards me, scooping my extra off into my mold on the side. Um, it does take multiple passes sometimes to get these nice and smooth. And you want to make sure you're not mixing any extra color in or scraping any of your leftovers into your other sides. Kind of as I scrape these layers, you can see on the left how the purple is kind of lumpy. I'm just going to use my spatula and kind of backfill and overfill that and then just scrape it again to get it nice and smooth. Uh, that is a pretty common technique you're going to have to use here. Uh, just as you pull your scraper, sometimes you'll get little air bubbles or little gaps in the soap and you can just smooth that out with a spatula and then scrape back over it. Uh, it does take a lot of passes sometimes and I like to pass kind of in both directions and then again just clean up my edges with my spatula. Once I'm happy with my layer and satisfied that it's nice and smooth and nice and even, I will move on to mixing my next layer. 
I did leave the rest of the video in here. Uh, it's slightly sped up, but it just goes through pouring and scraping the rest of my layers. Um, there won't really be any audio commentary for the rest of this, but if you guys want to watch how the rest of the soap is poured, uh, please do finish out watching the tutorial. And you can see how each of the individual layers was scraped and filled. And can kind of follow along with the illustrations that pop up on the right, which Belinda very wonderfully made for me. Uh, so you'll see there's an illustration that corresponds to which layer I'm pouring with a little red arrow. And then a second illustration when I scrape, which shows which is being scraped away. So you can see here we're pouring this magenta mountain on the right hand side. Uh, and hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. We'll be back at the end for the cut. One thing to add here is, as I've been pouring these layers, you'll notice that I've been doing each layer just one solid color, um, but you can play around with in the pot swirls or with other techniques, as long as the shape of your layer is being made via scraping. So I've just poured my very last uh, pyramid and it's been set up, and I'm gonna do a little flat layer in front of it, which I'm pouring just a clamshell technique with two different shades of kind of a golden brownie sand color, uh, just to kind of give the illusion of some texture to what in the final bar will be the desert sand. Uh, so you are welcome to play around with different colors in your pots. It doesn't have to be one color. And now we will move on to the cut. So for this recipe, uh, it's been about 18 hours since I poured these. I do uh, oven process all of my soaps. So they went in the oven to see pop overnight. Um, and now this morning I've unmolded them. You can see they're nice and firm, nice and hard. And I'm just peeling off that little paper guide layer. If you remember, I set that down in my mold. It just peels right off the edge of my loaf. And here I'm gonna just tune up my soap cutter here and voila, we have a sculpted layer design. 
Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. And at the end, there are some pictures of the finished bars side by side with the inspiration piece. Good luck, and I can't wait to see all of your designs.